Hey traders, don't forget to check out the Beginning Trading John Day Trading Challenge. As a part of the TradeNet Trading Challenge, every trader who qualifies for the challenge will receive a demo trading account with a trading balance of $10,000. If by the end of the trading challenge, you have achieved 500 and more in net profit, you will go ahead and win yourself an intro account and have access to a $14,000 in buying power funded account. Not only will you win an access to an intro account, which will give you access to that 14,000 funded account, but you'll also receive access to a self-study course, a live trading chat room, and a trading book brought to you by TradeNet. Definitely, guys, give it a chance. Give it a check out. It's a free demo account, giving you a chance to win an account that can put you forward in your trading career. Like always, guys, this is Mitch from Beginning Trading. Leave us questions. Leave us comments. We're always here to help. Take care. Guys, let me know if you guys can see that. Everything good? Yep. We're good. I think Eric right. actually got his mic working too. Hey, 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 that sounds exciting. All right, guys. So real quick, um, before I begin tonight, um, the reason I'm going over this lesson is really because, you know, it's something that I see you guys having a little bit more attention to. Um, the real keys of learning confirmation. Um, a lot of people like to have that question. Um, I think we get that question asked more than anything is, how do you really confirm the trade or how do you know the trade's going your way? And the only true way to get confirmation is by really starting to learn the level twos and understanding how to use the time and sales to our advantage. You know, this is gonna be how you really start being kind of having that advantage, that edge over new traders. Um, new traders, is this is a task that is usually really daunting to them. Um, it, they almost don't even have a clue what's going on in the level two, let alone understand the time and sales, because it's actually a combination of both so that you can get to the point where you could really start taking advantage on this. Um, you know, this is one of the, the skills that I feel like I've developed the most in this last year of trading. Um, I feel like the first year it was mainly just trying to determine strategies and get to understanding what a trader was. Um, the second year was really, you know, starting to take trades and getting through the ups and downs of just understanding what live emotion is like, you know, uh, most traders um, can do a lot of paper trading and this is good if you're doing it the right ways, but like always, when you go live, you're always gonna feel different emotions and getting through these emotions, you can start working through your execution. And year three really has been working through execution and really understanding the level twos and time and sales, understanding how, and this actually leads us into our first slide of tonight, which is what is the level two guys? Um, the level two is the market for supply and demand of a stock. You know, we first must understand that this is not just orders, you know, pending to be placed. Um, this is, has a lot to do with the psychology of trading. You know, a lot of times when we're watching uh, trades go through, you know, we only pay attention to the level twos, what's coming up there, what's happening. Um, but what really needs to be, um, you need to pay attention to the levels that are going through here and what's coming out on the time and sales. Um, a lot of traders are paying attention to either or. They're either paying attention to the time and sales or they're paying attention to the level twos. Um, it's really complicated, you know, as a new trader to look at, you know, level two, time and sales, your charts. Um, drawing lines and all this. And that's why you got to really study so that you can get to the point that, you know, these don't really kind of frustrate you. 
you're relaxed and you just kind of go about the process. Um, the market for supply and demand is what's really going on between the bid and the ask. You know, everyone wants to get in a stock. A lot of times, if you want to go long on a stock, you know, in bigger stocks, like let's say Apple here, you could get in on the bid, but for the stocks that we get in on, the liquidity is a lot of times lower. So you got to get in on the ass side. Reason being is that's the highest price or the first price that someone's willing to sell to you. Um, and that's what we mean by supply and demand. It's kind of a battle on which way it's going. The reason it moves one way or the other is because it starts tipping over to one side. Volume comes in on this side, it starts going up. Volume comes in on this side, it starts going down. Um, of course, this can also play in the factor of what's going on here and the psychology of the levels that these prices are going through. So the real big question is that I get is how to distinguish what's real and what's fake. You know, a lot of traders have this question, you know, um, we see so many orders go through there and a lot of times you'll get orders up on the ass. You'll get a big order like uh, this at 190s, 100,000 uh, shares. Um, you'll see a thousand shares, a thousand shares over here on the bid side, a big ass being put up. And what is that doing? Um, you know, many traders will put up huge bids or huge volume on the ass to stop or tackle a momentum in their favor. You know, trading is really all about momentum. And the way that momentum works in trading is that it works with volume. Um, it's not necessarily about who's buying it because it doesn't really matter about who's buying it. It matters about how much is being bought up and at what time. So timing is everything. And we all know how important prices play into stocks. So into these patterns, you're going to see traders kind of try to tackle or stop the momentum so that they can either improve their average or take down the stock through those important levels. This is why I pay attention to the level two and the time in sales because it can show you when there's another trader that's kind of either playing towards your strategy or playing against your strategy. So by finding that huge volume, you'll be able to distinguish what's real and what's fake. So when you want to know if an order gets through and it's not a fake order, it's not someone just trying to stop the momentum. Um, let's say if the stock were to bounce. Okay. Um, I'm going to just get a, a laser pointer here so you guys can see me a little bit. Let's say a stock is to go ahead and bounce and you got in at the VWAP, the trader got in at the VWAP and the stock goes down to the first support. We take our first profit down here and the stock bounces back up to the VWAP. If that trader really feels confident in this trade, he can go ahead and put up just slightly above the VWAP, a big, big order up on the ask. Um, uh, and there's no it's chart there, okay. um, Tiny. Just I'm just kind of it. describing it so you guys can understand it. Okay. Um, so when they throw up a big order up on the, on the ask, what they're trying to do is necessarily stop the momentum from breaking through and getting through the VWAP because that order is going to take a lot to get filled at that range. So what the order will do is it'll kind of reject the price action for that slight second. That slight rejection can get traders to jump in on the bid side and knock the trade right back down to the support. I know this is kind of hard to really understand at the beginning, and that's why we're doing this lesson tonight. This is really the starting and the beginning of understanding 
Um, I'm going to take many, many lessons on this as it's something that is not something easy and you guys are going to have to kind of work through it. Um, we'll work through it. We'll show you examples and we'll get through it. You know, the real key to using the level two is going to be to use the level two. You're going to use the level two to you show the confirmation of the volume going through on the time and sales. That's really the important part of using both and using it to confirm that the time in sales is showing that volume going through. The keys to using the level two. All right, so the keys to using level two really have to do with finding the big volume. You know, um, one of the key things that uh, Thinkorswim does is that it actually shows you uh, accumulation of volume that's been going through at certain price points. The reason it does this, and it does this on the active trader, is that it wants you to know that these key price points, how much shares are going through. Why is this important? It all goes back to supply and demand. Supply and demand decides where the stock goes. One of the real key things is that big volume, a big buyer or a big bid can cause the stock to really move. You know, the stock is, you know, doing these normal shares and then you see a big order like 35,000 shares go through. That, of course, is going to affect this stock really big. You know, this stock is a $280 price at 30, 35,000 shares, we're talking at least a hundred thousand, you know, right, that's and, a big order for a know, price, a and stock what expensive. really causes it is big volume equals momentum, you know, and one of the real keys of understanding the level twos is knowing where the key levels are holding and matching the support and resistance. What do I mean by that guys is so, it really is important to not only know where the resistance and the support is, but to understand the amount of volume that is going through at those prices. Let's say for instance, in this stock, let's say that the resistance was in this case, 20, uh, 280, 52, where you see this 381,000 volume going through. Um, this is the big bar here. This is where you would see the resistance and it went back down and it came down to the support, which was down here at this 233K. Um, the volume came right back in it and the price bounced right back up to that 280.52. So by seeing those volume going through there, you can kind of confirm that this is a true support not only is it a support on the chart but it's a support on the psychology of traders traders are not only seeing the chart but they're kind of actually fulfilling the chart so when it goes to those levels a lot of share volume is going through important thing to look for especially when you're trying to confirm a support or a trend line Look for those big orders to go through there as there's a big trader watching the same thing that you're watching. And it's all relative to the price of the stock as well. You know, like if it was a 30 cent stock, you know, uh, a 10,000 share order is not going to be that significant. But it, since this stock is super expensive, those are pretty big orders because yeah, that's, it takes a that's, lot, you know. It's massive. And you know, you always have to know the relative to your share size. You know, one of the key things that I use to do this is I separate my time and sales. I don't only use one order form for time and sales. I let the time and sales give me just a regular basic time and sales. Then I have another window where it's showing me a thousand shares or bigger. This thousand shares is kind of a little bit you know, a little bit less noise. It still moves a lot, but nowhere near as much as just a regular time in sales. It takes away the algorithmic volume 
which is at like 100 shares, 200 shares, um, or anything in between there. Um, it takes away that volume so that I could focus more on what I would consider retail traders. And then I have another window that really targets the bigger retail traders. These are the gurus. These are the traders that are actually changing the market, buying the big share size or selling the big share size and changing the market, actually playing an effect in the price and supply and demand of a stock. And in this chart, in this one window, I use only 2000 uh, shares or above or on stocks that have um, like an extreme amount of volume. What I mean by extreme is let's say the float is uh, 20 million, but the shares have already traded 40 million shares. Um, this is a stock that's trading a lot of shares. So you might have to filter out a little bit more. So I move up to 3000 shares. I want less noise, meaning less data going through so that I can focus in on just big purchase or sell orders. So how to take advantage of the time and sales. You know, this is really the big picture. This is really what everyone wants to really know. Um, you know, this is what sometimes I'm able to call out on the stream that I really see people get eager on. Um, the reason they get eager on it is that it usually calls what we call a really hard swing. Um, you know, the keys to using the level twos is to show confirmation through the time and sales. So if you're able to see the important price points as the stock approaches, let's say the resistance or the support, in our case, um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it as being the support because we like to short a little bit more often than go long. So we'll talk about the support. So as that price goes to the support on the level two, you want to see uh, sellers coming in on the bid and no one kind of slapping the ask at that level. Um, when they slap the ask at that level, um, those are people trying to buy the bottom to bounce it up. Um, you wanna see people kind of getting faked out and kind of jumping into the trade. And they usually come through on the bid side. So as it approaches that support level that you're seeing, that you're trying to see break, you want to see big volume slap on the bid and get filled. Not only is it gonna slap on on the level two, but it's gonna confirm because the amount that you see on that bid goes through on the time in sales. That shows you confirmation of volume, okay? This shows you that the order goes through and that it was at a key price. Usually in our case, the support but in other cases, if you're going long, you'd be really paying attention to more of the resistance. And so you wanna see a big order go through at that resistance price. At the breakout price of the long, you wanna see uh, buyers stepping up on the bid side when it comes down on the, on, on the pullback. And then when it comes on the breakout, you wanna see the big volume come through on the ass side show up on the level two on the ass side and get filled on the time and sales. So this shows you what? This shows you that the true, the only true confirmation signal that there is in trading. And a lot of traders will talk about this, that they, um, what's the signal? What's the confirmation signal? How do you know confirmation? And the truth is that the only true signal is volume going in the direction that your trade has been set on because your trade is not, um, and this comes, you know, you can be a big enough trader where you can affect the market, but your trade is not the only trade in, in the market. We got to remember there's thousands and thousands of traders making moves and seeing different strategies. So, what actually happens is 
is that it kind of fulfills your pattern. And that's why you have to stay in a process. So you set your strategy, you set yourself up for success, and then the volume confirms the trade. That's your confirmation. The volume steps in when you need confirmation of the trade. And you don't use volume to only take trades. Um, this is what I see a lot of scalpers do. This is what I see a lot of gurus do. And they're good at it, 100%. But can it be repeated? No. The reason why is that they're doing price action moves. They're only basing their buys and sell, not based on pattern, but strictly on volume. And it, it does work out for them because they're really fast and they have an ability to do that. But what they're using is the only confirmation signal that we have, which is volume. So what we do here at Beginner Trading is that we really teach you how to use a process. And then by using that process, by using the chart pattern with the right risk to reward, with the right confirmation coming from volume, it will keep you into the process and that process helps you what it helps you see the fake outs and it helps you see the flushes. Um, you know, we all want to see breakouts. We all want to see fake outs. Um, that's one that I left off on this one. You know, we all want to see those breakouts. We all want to know that confirmation and the way it's going to come is that you take a really well educated trade plan. And once you take that trade plan, it goes in, right? You have your risk to reward. You see it confirm through the volume. You see the big buyer step up and your, and your stock rockets up. You see the big seller step in there and he slaps the bid. Um, you see a little bit of hundred shares volume going through and next thing you know, boom, 5,000 shares, 5,000 shares, 6,000 shares. That's that seller that is, abiding by the strategy and kind of fulfilling your pattern. Yep. We were actually talking about the price action thing earlier is that that's what a lot of people, you know, that's what a lot of people do, but having the plan around it is even more important. You know, if you're just jumping in when you see good volume, hoping for a breakout, it's a coin flip. You know, but if you have a plan around it, it allows you it, it allows that strategy to be much more stable, if that makes sense. OK, guys, so um, really quickly, um, what we're going to do now is kind of take a little break from the PowerPoint. I want to show you guys the trade that I am going to show you guys on the on demand. I am gonna need John's help for that a little bit. But what we're going to do is at first, I'm going to show you the trade itself. Then secondly, we'll see the trade happen live. And instead of really paying attention to trading it, we're just going to kind of more pay attention to the time and sales and the level two so we can really understand it. Tonight's not really about tackling the trade, but more about understanding the level twos and the time and sales. So the trade that I took, um, just to show you guys that it's not a trade that, you know, I'm making up here, that it's an actual trade that we did here is this is a trade that I took on October 2nd. I closed um, 100, 800 shares traded in the whole trade. I shorted 400 shares at $8 and I covered instantly 300 shares at 789, covered 50 shares at 755. And then the remaining 50 shares all the way down at 705. Nice work, okay. brother. You should be able to log into my thinkorswim already, Mitch, if you want to. Yeah, I, I might try to do that. It was just, I, I was running a little low on time, so. Here, I can I'll, do it if you need to. It's up to you, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if I can get it up right quick, but I'm just so bad with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, just, it's cool. I can, I can do it. Just let me, just yeah. uh, guide so me through then, um, so let's go a little bit more into actually um, kind of explaining the trade before we s actually see it happen. At least have my thinkorswim open. I uh, kind of labeled this out so that we can see it better, guys, and really understand what happens in this trade. 
Um, so this is a trade on MBEV that happened on October 2nd. You know, in pre-market, we had a big range, big range up there from 824 all the way down to 755. You know, big range in pre-market. And this stock kind of, you know, rocketed up at the open, you know. Um, it did kind of what uh, we call right here, what we call this is a symmet symmetric triangle. This is not necessarily um, leaning towards one side or the other, um, but what it is is symmetrical, you know, and how do you really tackle these is one in this stock, we had a good level to go off of, which was the pre-market resistance. And this was a trade that I ended up shorting, um, you know, that pre-market resistance really gives us an ability to start seeing it, the levels come down and use it as a level that we can go off of. Um, another thing that we had in this stock is a good range to try to tackle. And the good range gives us an ability to, if we're smart, we can get the right risk, small risk for a big reward move. And that's what you wanna see really guys. You know, a lot of times, you know, you don't wanna take the trade on the stock that's moving five, 10 cents you know, these stocks are going to be hard to judge. And like we talk in trading psychology, one trader can move it. Um, you know, these stocks that are moving up and down, there's actually important levels here that are playing key parts. And it gives you an edge to take in the market. You just have to learn how to tackle that edge. So this stock uh, does the classic, you know, um, a lot of times I look for my rule, the three rule. And this stock kind of does exactly that. You know, we get a drive to R1, you know, R1 up here, resistance, A66, comes down, builds a support. S1 down here, we get a drive, doesn't really create a resistance line, comes down. Then we finally get a drive to, to what we're gonna call R2. R2 comes up here and creates almost three points at one, at one level. Um, what does this do, guys, is you're going to see a lot of price action in that time. When we're watching the trade, this is where about where we're going to start it at, probably right before this. But we're going to see a lot of price action in that trade right there at 830. And as we see that price action, as I see this dump off right here, this is when I really get excited. I'm starting to see the price action match the pattern with the trade. And what happens, it creates that S2. Now I really have this line that I can just kind of draw. I have one connection, two connection, three connection that makes it a, com a confirmed line and I draw it all the way out. I got two points touching there, two points there. I can draw the line out and kind of look for my entry. Um, the stock breaks through eight and the only thing I'm thinking is, please, if you can make it back above eight, I'm going to go ahead and be able to short you as I now have this resistance that I can go off of. I have this trend line that I have right here that I can go off of or the pre-market high, a whole bunch of levels to base my risk on and a good reward. I move down there to the 790s and I know this can get down to the pre-market low or the daily low, which is down there at 762. So as this stock goes through that level, it bounces up there. I get short on it and it instantly comes down below it. I don't, I don't freak out here and sell there. I wait for the breakdown. And as soon as it breaks down, I sell a little bit as I'm just trying to get out a little bit here at this first support. Um, in this trade, I was expecting it to almost bounce a little bit and get to the VWAP, then go down. But what happens here is big sellers show up here at this 789 range and just completely knock this stock down. Um, so that's kind of the explanation. I think let's actually go into it. Let's see the trade happen so that we can see this. Um, and after that, um, we'll go into really quickly. I have the video already. Uh, select it out from the trade so that you can hear me talk the trade out, hear me 
talk about the big sellers and what actually happens in the trade. So like I said, guys, um, you know, this is when it starts creating that trend line. Look for those imported price levels and kind of you see how those bidders are showing up here. Let's pay attention really to the level twos. Um, the level two is showing 200 there at that 822 price kind of pushes it and just brings it right back down, guys. Levels, it's important to see those kind of start rejecting when it gets up there and kind of bouncing the same thing at the bottom. I'm um, getting in between this, this uh, pattern. And if you see the pattern and you see the price action matching the pattern, then that can kind of already give you confidence within yourself to go ahead and just really plan and execute your trade. I think I drew the um, trend lines at the right spot. We'll see. Yeah, I think you're doing perfect. You know, and that's that's the fun part of it is watching them for fill. Um, a lot of traders are like kind of worried. Oh man, is it gonna fill? Not nah, just let it let it fulfill itself. You know. Yep. You know, once it fulfills itself, then you get that confirmation of all right. I'm trying to tackle this stock. You know. But until you get that complete pattern, just kind of hang out, watch the levels, watch the volume, you know, look for those big orders. Just going to mark out the pre-market support. We got the pre-market high here, and then we have the support down here. Price action at those levels, always important. So you see right there, 200 comes up on the ass. It goes through. And it just kind of, it's up there, it's up there. It's at the next level at 25. Why is it up there at 25? Is because it wants to get filled, improve that average. If they can improve that average, a lot of traders kind of get faked out there. Um, some traders are buying here. Some traders are trying to improve their average and get up there to that trend line. As you see, it kind of reverse and just come right back down. There you go. Now it's starting to confirm the trade. This is when you kind of got to start, you know, just being like, all right, this is starting to really look like a good pattern. This is not time to tackle the trade. This is time to understand the trade. This is when I start looking, is it the first or is it the second resistance try? Um, do I got a clear defined uh, risk to reward in this trade? And where is the level that I want to get in on so that I could get this breakdown and have the right risk to reward? As we see another drive and watch how when it gets to that price level of probably about like 825s, how it immediately gets some volume to go through and gets knocked down. Yeah, Boom. Try to pause it there. You see, you see low volume, low volume, a whole bunch of volume get in there. Boom, pause it. Right there, guys. That's someone improving an average. Do you see at 827, 43,000 shares go through? It's down near, near the bottom. Here. 827. Um, go down. Here. Boom. Yeah. 43,000 shares. What is that, guys? That's someone improving their share price. Um, big traders uh, love to start adding size, 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 and improving their average. The, what they're doing is they're tightening their risk and actually improving their price so that by tightening their risk, they have now, let's say they first started the trade at 30, 30 cent risk. Now they average in a little bit more. They have a 20 cent risk. Now they have a 10 cent risk but a full size position and the pattern is matching their trade. I talked to John a lot about this is good traders really increase risk when the trade is working for them. All right. So let's go ahead and continue and watch out what happens after that. 
you know, you get that level 27s come in and new candle comes out and it immediately does what guys it just rejects there too much volume at that one level. It can't break out, you know, and you're seeing a lot of that little volume, those one hundreds, was the algorithmic computers trying to improve their price point and get the best price that they can. Now that you're seeing those three touches, isn't the trend line looking really strong there, guys? Yeah. What do you guys think in the in the chat? Isn't that trend line looking really strong now? For sure. Absolutely. You know, and this is when you're really gonna start not being biased, but understanding that this could be a good possibility. Um, you guys see this quick price action move down there? Hit pause. All right, so scroll down a little bit on the time and sales. Get on the red. Yeah, and look how the big volume is in there. There's right there, right there. Go. You see this, guys? This is what you're looking for, guys. It's small volume followed by big volume. You see at the bottom, there's small volume. Those are algorithmic orders. Then there's the retail traders, which is that 1,000, that 4,520 shares, 2,000 shares. These are really traders starting to hit what we call hit the bid, and they chase the trade. By chasing the trade, it gives us an ability to start being better than they are. We're going to get a better price average, and we're going to get a better risk to reward than them. So this is when I really start getting interested. I'm like, man, you know, of course you always want that 820 price, but if you didn't get it there, now it's time to really just look for the bounce to the trend line or look for a bounce that you can judge your risk right near that trend line or a little bit above that trend line. So do you guys see that, uh, the big volume before we continue? See all the big orders here, 805, 806, 809, 809, 810, and then little orders underneath it. So the algorithmic traders jumped in early. You can see the big time, the actual traders starting to jump in with these big sizing. Exactly. So let's, let's go ahead and let's hit play here. Let's see this come down and get some buying support at the bottom, at support. You see this? You'll see it kind of flip from red to green here. Red, 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 red. It, it looks almost like Christmas. <laughs> and then what do you guys see? It's a reversal. You'll see a big share size right here. That's what we call that, that flip. You see all the green? The flip. And then what is it? It's little volume followed by what? Big sizing. Big sizing right there, guys. The big sizing, you know. You know, a lot of this is not going to really stick to with you until you really see it multiple times over and over and then you guys are going to be like man this this one lesson right here can make me money but what it is is that you're going to start seeing it be consistent and once you see it be consistent you can start looking for these and not i always suggest don't trade just off of this but if you're using the pattern and it's matching the strategy and then you can take a complete trading plan. Let's tackle this. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's see this bounce. Now that you've seen it get underneath eight, I understand 820 up there is a risk. I can take about a little bit above eight. I want it to bounce a little bit above that eight and I want to really tackle this stock. You know, this is when you kind of want to let it bounce here and see where the bounce is going to go. You know, I I think it's more than okay to judge your risk and reward after this bounce, but I actually get in the trade a little bit later. So we're going to kind of more follow what I actually did. And I would just tell you guys that this is kind of more along the point where you can really start taking entries. Um, after this support touch, you have that support three. The only thing you care about is it not breaking that resistance line. If it doesn't break that resistance line, you can go ahead and short it. Um, a lot of traders are kind of more weary when, Here. of course, 
it's moving up there, you know? Um, and so traders are actually starting to take trades. Um, you're starting to see big volume go through on the bid side, low volume on the green side. Why? Because there's some traders trying to get filled here, trying to tackle it. They saw that move to eight and they slammed the bid. They chased the trade. By them chasing the trade, they improve our price point because we're just looking for the bounce. We understand that that price point is support three and not the breakdown in this pattern. It needs to break down through support three, then we can see it really break down. So what do we do? We get to see this bounce here. I don't see the move to the resistance so I don't take the trade. I wanted to get as close to that trend line as possible. Um, if I would have seen eight tens, I actually had an order out here uh, at like eight elevens, eight ten that doesn't get filled on the bid side. And really quick, so why do we want it to get close close to that resistance trend line? It gives us a what? Anybody in the chat? Yeah, anybody know why we want to be closest to that? trend line for us to enter the trade tighter risk exactly a hundred hundred percent guys the tighter risk that we can have the more sizing we can get into the trade and we can understand what risk with sizing means so if i normally am okay with um let's say a thousand shares 10 cent risk that's a hundred dollar risk right but i can take the same kind of risk and i can make it five cents and take 2000 shares. Right. That's the same thing. I increase, I adjust my share size to the amount I want to risk for this trade. Uh, hold on, my wife's calling me, Mitch. Do you want me to press play real quick? Yeah, if you want, yeah, go ahead. We still have like two or three minutes to the entry, so. You can just mute. All right, guys, so what you go see here, guys, is a little bounce there. It doesn't really get up to that resistance. And so you're gonna see it come right back down and bounce off the support one more time. It kind of even does a little wick out and we'll see what, what a kind of a fake down is. Um, you'll see this fake down, it's little share size, not followed by really big share size. And that's why it's a fake down. So there's the big size bringing it down, right? You see the big size, 9,000 shares going through there. That 9,000 shares going through just brings it down. And then you're gonna see kind of a wick out. All right, I'm back. And that would have been a really nice tight risk trade too on that little bounce yeah that's why i described that as a possible entry i think i definitely think that's an entry right there you could have already gotten in this trade um i was actually almost killing myself right here i'm like man did i miss my entry and all i can think is as long as i can get a bounce here i'll go ahead and i'll try to take this trade you know we get this wick out Right here is little volume, little volume, little volume, but there's not that big volume behind it. And what happens? That green switch. Remember guys, we talk about green, red, that red to green move, what does it cause? It causes a reversal, a reversal of supply and demand. So we get this fake down there. It's kind of, instead of a fake out, I call fake outs more on the long side. It's like a fake down move. So it's a fake out on the downside and it just recovers. The ass gets bought up again and it bounces right here. Too much people slamming the bid, causing it to be oversold, causing the stock to bounce a little bit. It doesn't mean the stock is not gonna go down. It just means that it's too heavy right now on that side. So by it bouncing, what does it do? Everybody that was long, is about to get out. If they didn't get out, they're about to get out right now, managing the risk, taking the trade off because they realized that it isn't gonna go long. They already saw that third touch and it needs to break out above 820 for it to be a breakout.
So um, we're, we're really not going to take this trade because taking the trade is going to make us kind of really want to see what I call the random results. Um, but this is where you want to go ahead and take your trade, you know, right in this area right here, 8, 808 off of 809. You can risk off of 820 or if you want to go a little bit higher, right up to the pre-market highs, which is like 825, 824s. And that's a perfect risk to get your reward down there at 780s and then 760s. So we get this last little bounce. Right here is where I start slamming the, to get in the trade. Um, I see the volume start building up there and you're gonna see it reject right here really quickly. It rejects up there. And then as soon as it rejects, you're gonna see it get slammed on the bid side. It goes from green straight to red. And get ready to pause, John. Now you see this volume coming in here and pause. Boom, guys, this is the exact moment. I got in there at $8 and look at all the volume. If you scroll down, you'll start seeing it just accumulate. As it gets closer to eight, people just slam the bid here, guys. All that volume is what I call confirmation. You wanna know what confirmation is? It's that, it's that volume accumulation at the breakdown or breakout point. This gives you that real drive to get to your support and get to, or in long cases, get to your resistance. Hey, I'll be right back. My daughter needs a Band-Aid. It's all good. So I'll like just explain it guys a little bit more, but this is really what you're gonna see. You're gonna see that breakdown of the volume. You guys see how it went from green rejection straight to red and then little volume, big volume. You see that big volume in there? All right, are you, are you guys following along on how I'm explaining it and how what really happens is the pattern gets confirmed, not by the chart, but by the volume. The volume tells it that it's gonna confirm the play confirm the strategy. All this can do is give you confirmation. It's never going to 100% make your trade validated. All it's doing is confirming it. Confirmation is nothing but probability, putting probability in your side and your advantage. This helps you tons. When the trade goes your way because a big trader or big traders are taking the psychological advantage of the pattern and you're actually in that direction, you're gonna get the most from your trade. All right, I'm back. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play and watch as all that volume accumulating really tackles this. I'm short there. I got short at uh, 858 with 57 right as that candle opened and boom. Big volume starts stepping in there. Yeah, this is really popping. weird. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, pause. So you see that's at the lower part, those 85s, they get hit again, 7,000 shares and 3000 shares go through simultaneously. That's a 10,000 share order getting filled. 10,700 shares getting filled. That's someone slamming it after they already hit it at eight. So what they do is they accumulate a best average. And when the pattern confirms and they saw that volume break down at eight, they see the next support and they slam that next support even more to push to the next support, keep the momentum driving in their favor. 
This is what I call my momentum shares. They're using their momentum shares to push the stock towards the support so that they can take profit at 780 real quickly and then target that 760. Yeah, and this is also the fulfilling of this triangle. You know, it just cracked under the triangle. The triangle pattern is broken now. It's done. You know, and this is where you're going to get the big breakout or the big breakdown either way, you know. All right, go ahead and hit play, and then we'll watch the trade and just fulfill and then kind of come down. And you guys will see where I start taking profit. I took profit there at 789 as soon as it broke down. 79? Or yeah. 89. I took it almost too quickly because I was expecting the bounce to the VWAP. I was expecting the bounce right there to the VWAP, and then I was going to tackle it with the same sizing again, add that same sizing. But I just got a washout, you know. This is just people slamming on it. And that volume creates this motion. You know, my next profit – I'm looking to take profit at 760 and it goes so fast that I take profit right there, 755. Right when you saw that 755, that move, that first push, I just take profit right there. Boom, take profit at 755. And now I only have 50 shares left and I look for long-term support. Where's the long-term support? It's by that 720. Look, yeah, that's exactly where I went to. You can see it right here, yeah. the big bottom of pre-market. What happens? Pause. All right, let's go down a little bit more, and we'll see when it first gets to those 20s. It gets hit again. People hit it again. It, uh, on the level two or on the it's time and sales? On the time and sales. Like, just scroll down a little bit. Scroll down, scroll down. What what number are we looking for? Uh, for the twenties. Let's 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 hit play for a second. Yeah, you might have missed it. Uh, it's still kind of working. Here's seven twenties. Yeah, right. it just hit seven twenties. Yeah. You'll see how these levels actually get hit again. It bounces a little bit, bounces a little bit, volume accumulation up there at the thirties. It's trying to get back to the resistance, which now it was the prior support up there. At the 760s. Yeah, it's trying to get back up there, but watch what happens. It gets tackled right back down. Big seller steps in there, 13,000 shares on the bid side. Flew by there. After that, thirteen thousand shares. It just, it's just trying to bounce. It's trying, guys. That's why you're seeing that, that kind of, that, that fight between what we call the, the supply and demand. The demand is bringing this down, but all the supplies is on the downside, holding it down. Um, let's go ahead and let's fast forward to 10.04 or right there. So we can just get through this and see the move. So we get a tiny bounce. It keeps that resistance up there. Now it's 7.57, 7.60s. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do we use, guys? Important levels, guys. What happens at those important levels? You see that big red change. It's going to go from green to the sweep of red. There's the sweep, volume following, big volume following, and it gets knocked down from that pricing. And right after that pricing, you're going to see that the volume is going to start swaying red, heavily red, bigger, bigger traders come in there and knock it back down all the way to sevens. There it is. Look. Where's the big order? I just saw it. 8,500 at 750. Boom. 8,500, 1,000, 1,000, 1,300. Big orders. Big orders start swaying. And what? Oh, just a sea of red. It's rejecting that price. Yeah. 
then after that price rejection, you just want to see confirmation come from volume. Volume is going to come right here and just sweep it down. Big orders. Big Look orders. Order. Let me see if I called it. 15,000 shares. I'm trying to see where. Oh. I'm going to have it too quick. No, it was up. Was you, up. you had it right there. That's why I use, okay, so this is a good lesson in why I separate the volume, guys. If you separate the volume, you can only pay attention to those big ones. Right, so if you're on thinkorswim, all you have to do is go to here, shares greater than or equal to 2,000, and all you see is these big orders. You can really kind of see which big orders are going through and which ones aren't. So that's why I separate it out. I have like one little, one bigger, one bigger. Right, I need to learn how to do that as well on my charts because at this point I just kind of look at the little or the big orders this is fine Eddie had a good question um, through the whole trade you're already anticipating the breakdown to the downside question mark uh, I think the risk and reward was just better on the downside for this one no it, it, you know one of the key things is this was a symmetrical symmetricals you can't really judge up or down you can only judge that once it has that third point you can make your decision on where you're going to go short or long what helped me decide short was that first wipe down through eight that we saw we saw that first smash down through eight and while i saw that smash down all the volume accumulated at the bottom not the top so since the volume's at the bottom i'm going to get a better price and try to tackle those volume that volume that was there another thing that what, what I was really meaning is that if you look at the big support levels from pre-market, the big support level is way down here, right? And so you could call that your maximum risk if you're going long. And the big resistance level from pre-market is substantially closer. And so it's a tighter risk if you're going short, if yep. that makes sense. All right, play here. You're going to see rejection off of 750s and a move back down. We always like to see those breakdowns of support and the support become resistance. And that's what we see in this case. And that's why the stock ends up getting knocked back down. Um, put the time and sales back to the regular way. There you go. Yeah, I want you guys to see the swing. And, and when you have it the regular one, you really see the swing of colors. And that's like kind of, it's a positive and a, and a negative. The swing can get you really emotional. But the swing I use to decipher the noise. I don't use it to, to create emotions. I use it to my advantage. I decipher the noise. And what do you guys see? Big volume stepping in there, starting to knock it down, and boom. Eight thousand shares there the going through twice. Yeah, let's just let it flow through, and you'll see this drop. Yeah, all those big orders and the time of sales going through. Yeah, that's what moves it, guys. Confirmation, guys. I'm holding through all this. Why am I holding? It just created a resistance up there. There's no reason to sell. There's no reason to cover. You know? Until it breaks this level. Yeah, until it gets back above that, I don't have to get out of this trade because it can do what we like and that's what we want to see is that home run move, that all day fader where you can really take advantage right. or another support move. And what do I get? I get a sweep through 720s it just blows through it and when you get blown through your price point it's more than okay to just hold 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 until you see that swing of color again if it's just red why are you covering you know and this is what you see right here swing boom still pretty red that's where i actually covered right there when it just stopped and I covered here and I get I get filled there at seven, seven oh five, but you could have still held it. 
because it was still momentum was still driving it down. Yep. So, you know, I, I also now it has that resistance here. Exactly. So you could hold to that level and just kind of keep it to that level and just keep going down, you know? Um, you know, I hope that this was a really good example for you guys to see the level twos and the time and sales and how it plays into part. Um, you know, the, I, what I always say is the level two on the bottom can fake you out, but the time and sales has can't. Truth. Right. It has to tell the truth because those are actually orders going through. Right. They're not lying about those orders. They're not a bunch they, of inactive orders not inactive but they're not a bunch of fake orders that people can just yeah. put out with no intention of actually getting filled the level no. two is actually filled orders yeah what i call them is pending orders it's kind of like a pending charge on your checking account it's not going through it could be even going through for a smaller amount but it's just hanging out there and that's really what you see on the level two is that pending amount that could happen it's a possibility. It doesn't really prove it until you see it on the time and sales. Okay, let's uh, go back to um, making me host and we'll go back to the slideshow and we'll kind of wrap up tonight. All right, guys, this was the trade for tonight. I hope that you guys saw how I used the resistance and the supports to judge my trade and tackle this trade. You know, how are we going to take advantage of the time in sales? The key is always going to be used to level two to show confirmation through the time and sales. Um, this shows that the orders went through and that it was a key price level. Usually support or resistance is going to let you see the volume as confirmation for your trade. The true tip of the true confirmation signal. Um, it lets you see both fake outs, flushes, and breakouts, guys.